Monday, December 5th, our United Women in Faith will be meeting for their annual Christmas meeting at 10 a.m. in the fellowship hall. Everyone brings a favorite holiday snack during this fellowship time. If you've not attended one of these meetings, it's a great time to travel now. And we have a lot more coming up, so please make sure and read your bulletins and mark your calendars, because we've got so much exciting stuff happening. Are there any other announcements? There is one other. Um, the uh, Good News Sunday School class will have their Christmas party next Saturday at right after the uh, Christmas parade. And it will be in the fellowship hall or the gym? In the fellowship hall. Okay. All right. Thanks, fellas. Uh, now let us quiet our hearts and prepare for worship. May the Lord be with you.
greatest gift mankind could ever imagine, your precious Son, our Savior, our source of joy and our only hope. He is no longer a babe in a manger, and we not only need your peace and joy, Lord, we claim it. We know that peace on earth can only come when hearts find peace with you. Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, and the King of Kings, and we celebrate you this morning and forevermore. Amen. Opening okay, hymns on page 213, Lift Up the Gates, Unite the Gates.
Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. In these words from the letter of St. Paul to a community of Christians living long ago, we hear an important message for us. Why right the beginning of Advent? First, we hear that God is the one who is at work in us. Something to remember not only during Advent, but throughout the year. God is the source of love and of the strength we need to love one another every day. Jesus came to us as a baby long ago in Bethlehem so that we might be saved and grow in holiness each day. The second thing St. Paul reminds us of is that God's gift to us means that we have something to do, too. In fact, we are doing it right now as we pray, learning how we ought to live and gain strength from God to live that way. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, open our hearts to your coming each day this Advent. Help us to be prepared to meet you when you come in the fullness of your glory. Amen. Give to a Methodist preacher who to take up the ties a little too early. <laughs> we invite our ushers to come forward. Worship God with God's size and our offering. Lord, with hearts of worship, we come and we offer to you a part of the blessings that you have first given to us. Lord, we ask that you bless the gifts of the givers to further your kingdom here on earth and us in your service. In Christ's holy name, amen. <coughs>
Safe travels. I think we've got a lot of folks traveling today. I've seen some empty pews. Folks have had people traveling to their house too. Anybody else? Don't forget to be thankful for all the little things. A little blessing. Don't see people fanning themselves and be grateful for air conditioning, even in November. It's not until we miss those little things that we really begin to be grateful. And as we pray, I know that we also have some struggles. Uh, Sue Deer is uh, from Rexford Church. I know a lot of you know her. She's anticipating a, a, a heart catheterization uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, we pray for Ann and Phil Armitrout, Ann's to have a procedure. Is it Thursday or Wednesday? Don't help me out. Wednesday. Wednesday, thank you. All right. And uh, who else are we praying for? Yes, ma'am. Oh. The family of my friend and neighbor Jeanette Bird Harper. Jeanette was 91, died last Sunday. Okay. She was a librarian here in Florida for 33 years. And there is a celebration of life service for her this afternoon at 2 at Mount Zion Church if you would like to join. Okay. Anybody else? Anna Gerald Nine's husband passed away last month. Anna Knight. Anna Gerald Nine. Okay. Husband Nine. Family of Al Hale. Al Hale passed away. Uh, loyal member to the Mary Bozeman class. Anybody else? As we pray, we remember that we still have soldiers that are out on the front lines. We have people fighting for peace in this world and they're on the front lines. We have fire department, we have police that are out there ready for us right now. So as we sit in peace and as we sit in comfort, don't forget to be thankful for the blessings that we have. Let's pray for our nation and let's pray for our denomination. Let's pray for each other. And as we pray, the Lord be with you.
Lord, as we've united with friends and families, we thank you for the opportunity to have a break, to take a deep breath, to recharge, to energize. And Lord, as we look forward in anticipation in the season of Advent, we prepare our hearts for you always. We pray for those that are traveling and for those that are on their way home and those that are coming back to work and back to school. Lord, we pray for those that we've mentioned that we've lifted up in our hearts, that Sue and Ann. Lord, we all have somebody that we carry with us, and even though we haven't named them out loud, you know our prayers long before we pray. We realize that there's been a lot of loss. There's been a lot of sadness. Lord, in the midst of all that we lift up, Lord, let us find our faith, our hope, and our strength in you. For we pray even when we don't know how to pray in the way that you taught us when you said say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the earth.
Jeremiah and also in Luke 21, if you want to put your fingers there. We'll start with Jeremiah. Before I read, I want to say, Advent is about anticipation. Advent is about getting ready. Advent is about looking forward to something. Y'all ever look forward to something? You know, in this time of travel where kids are out of school and, and parents are out of work, there's usually a lot of travel. And so when you're traveling, sometimes you might go long distance and you're anticipating seeing family or friends or maybe you're going to Colorado for a go snow skiing or, or doing something. Or, you know, it's, it's about looking forward to something. And with all that energy of looking forward to what might be, you know, sometimes the trip can get to be boring, can get to be long, can get to be tedious. And so you hear that classic question from the back seat that is, are we there, are we there yet? Exactly. I think that the spirit of faith of Advent asks the question, are we there yet? And we live in the tension of wanting to be someplace with this promise of this child that is born for us, but do we feel like we're there yet? We have to, in the season of Advent, grab a hold of the faith in that promise. So we're reminded from the prophet Jeremiah. And remember that Jeremiah spoke to people who were slaves in Babylon, who's had their homes destroyed, who saw no future, who saw no hope. And he says to them in chapter 33, starting in verse 14, the days are coming. Would you like to hear that? Get ready, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the gracious promise that I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the time by which it will be called the Lord our righteousness. The days are coming. Advent is about the days are coming. We are living into this promise. This promise of this Christ that is born for us and we are getting ready in ways that we get ready. We decorate and we write cards and we cook and we eat and we watch football. We do all these things in preparation but it's really about preparing the heart. What are we doing to prepare our hearts? I mean, wasn't this promise made a long time ago? But if we read the scriptures, we see that that promise is really an ongoing theme. A theme that God's promise happened all the way back in Genesis. And again and again and again. And again, we need to be reminded. Because it feels like we're never going to get there. And the question of faith becomes, are we there yet? Jesus made a promise to the disciples also in Luke chapter 21. And in Luke 21, Jesus paints a different picture. You know, those feel-good words of Jeremiah... <laughs> kind of get overturned by the words of Christ in 21, starting in verse 25. And there he says, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And on earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. And at that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And then Jesus told them this parable. Look at all the trees. And when they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves. You know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until these things have happened. 
Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful of your hearts. They may be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and the day will close upon you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who live in the face of the whole earth. Be always on watch and pray that you will be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Beloved, it's the word of God for the people of God. For the people say, Thanks be to God. Lord, give us strength in the coming of these days as we anticipate that we may be fully present in Christ's holy name. Amen. When we read Luke, or when you study this, I want to bring up the point that there's a timeline here. And I also want to bring up that there is no timeline in the Bible. We are taught history that starts at one point in time and it moves forward through history. And we can talk about dates and we can make reference to all that. But I want to point out that nowhere in the Bible or in God's history is there time. There is one reference to time that Jesus came in the fullness of time in Ephesians. And that means when the time is right. Well, we like to, we like to, to organize things. And so we, we've, we've said that there's the time before Christ and the time after Christ. And, and we like to think about things in the line. So imagine this. There are three time periods here that I want you to keep in mind all at the same time. First of all, there's the time period that Jesus spoke these words. These words that seem to be troubling. They're, they're about the prophecy. They call this the little apocalypse. A prophecy of the destruction of Judah. A prophecy that comes not too long after the, the destruction of the temple where Jesus says that this temple will be destroyed and in three days be risen up. And Jesus is speaking to the disciples that are hearing this. And I imagine it creates great anxiety, great frustration, not peace, and not comfort. So as we think about time when Jesus spoke these words, probably somewhere around the early 30s AD, 31, 33, somewhere around there. If we want to think in terms of time. Then there's another point in time that if you're a really good historian and scholar, you know about this, but most of us don't. That what Jesus predicted came true. About the year 66 AD, Rome just decided they had had enough and they came in. It's called the Great Jewish War. For four years, from 66 to 70, Rome destroyed everything. People were massacred in mass numbers. Christians were Called off in persecution. And finally, kind of the, 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 the ultimate of it was the destruction of the temple. The temple that Solomon had built and had been rebuilt under uh, uh, Caiaphas. And now it's gone. It's all gone. There's nothing left but what they now call the Wailing Wall, where people go to pray and they put little notes in there. And the last holdout. 72 AD for real good scholars the Temple Mount Masada where the Jews held out to the last breath and then it's all over. Everything Jesus predicted about the destruction of Jerusalem the destruction of the Temple, it all come true 66 to 72 AD. Keep this in your timeline. Now we've got what Luke has written and Luke probably wrote somewhere in the 80s around 85 to 90 AD so Luke is writing about something Jesus had formally said that had already come true. And he knew that this generation had seen these things had happened. So as we take this and as we listen to these words and as we try and think about the anticipation of Advent, I want you to suspend time. Remember, the Bible doesn't talk about time in that linear fashion. The Bible talks about the presence of God. And as we suspend time, we think about the presence of Christ even in the midst of the suffering. Even in the midst of the persecutions. Even in the midst of the wars and the times of trouble. Because Jesus said, this generation shall not pass before the, son, the coming of the Son of Man. Now if we take that literally, do we feel like Jesus has overcome? Do we feel like we have received the victory? Do we feel like we live in peace and in the kingdom of God? I ask you. 
then what happened? What happened if we were to take this in the literal sense of Jesus' talks? Anticipation is about the journey. Anticipation is about when we're right into that place and we're in the back seat and our spirits want to say, are we there yet? And it's not always comfortable. It's not always easy. Sometimes we're bored. Sometimes we're stuck in the back of that station wagon with our sisters that are pestering us. <laughs> and all we want is relief. And all we want is to know peace. And all we want is to exhale and be bathed in the love of God. But instead, we continue in this journey. The journey that is full of cancer. The journey that is full of arthritis and suffering and struggles. The journey that is full of political unrest and, and even denominational craziness. The journey that we're not sure of what will happen tomorrow. And if you think that things are bad today, go back and study the first century. Jesus predicted total chaos. Then he made that these things happen. Look up. Keep your hands up. Keep aware. Stay vigil. Stay in prayer because if we don't, we'll fall away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down. Y'all feel like your hearts get weighed down sometimes? Your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. This is not what God wanted. This is not the promise that happened from Genesis and all the way through Jeremiah that the days are coming. But if we get so wrapped up in the goal, the end, we miss the journey. The blessing of being stuck in that station wagon on those travels that I had a mother, I had a father who said, look at the mountains. Look at the fields. Look at the towns that we're going through. Look at the beauty that we're passing. And we are called in the season of Advent to be aware of the journey. The journey is here. The journey is now. The time is not somewhere out there. The time is now. The kingdom of God is upon us. But it's really a matter of your heart. We get a chance in our faith. We get a chance to respond to the struggles and to live into the moment. And in that moment, in that frustration as we're in the storylines and and as we're fighting over things, we can be in a moment of peace. And we can say, you know, you got all those kids. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead? And we can bring a little bit of the kingdom of God and let that dawn before us at that moment. And sometimes when people are struggling or people are suffering, we can be a bit of kindness. We can be a, a bit of help. We can share the love of Christ. And we bring a little bit of the kingdom of God at that moment. It becomes a destiny and a journey at the same time. Advent is about the journey and the anticipation, but it's also about living into the promise and living into that promise today just as true as it was 4,000, 2,000 years ago. The question, as Jesus spoke first of all to the disciples, and then as Luke rewrote it to all the hearers of faith that were struggling, and as we hear it today, the question is, will we live into the faith? In the midst of the struggle and the meanness, will our hearts be weighed down? Will we give in to other gods and other politicians and other people that will say, hey, come follow us because i got the quick and easy road? Or are we going to stay firm in the love that God has promised journey, folks. It's always been a journey. And then as we live into that journey, as we claim that promise, it becomes real. It becomes a destination of the kingdom of God that dawns before us day in and day out. The blessing that we have is that we can tell the world there is a Christ. There is a salvation. There is a peace. There is an end to all of this. And we live into it. Even as we journey. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for the fullness of time as you come to us, both yesterday, today, and forever. 
and the anticipation of that served in us the longings, and the love, and the hope of this child that is born for us. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is on page 211. O come, O come, Emmanuel, God with us. 211 in your hymn. I'll invite you to stand and hear.